Kana Sagosa. Higale. All right. Well, I obviously don't need to drive home just how exciting this is for a lot of us Hollow Knight fans out there. I've been recently involved with Elden Ring, obviously, but there really has just been this massive hole in my heart that's been starving for Silk Song news that's finally just been filled after so long. The first and probably most important discussion topic is what is yet to be the final release date for Silk Song, and already tons of fans have taken to marking their calendars on that precious February 24th date of 2023. This is a very sentimental day for the Hollow Knight community as a whole, as the first Hollow Knight game was released exactly six years prior to this date on February 24th, 2017. However, I think it's important to remember Team Cherry is no longer facing the same circumstances that they were when making Hollow Knight, and they've since attracted the attention of massive corporate superstars like Microsoft and Nintendo. For this reason, I'm personally looking at a holiday 2022 release, even though I kind of hope I'm wrong on that because that February 24th release date is simply too sentimental and meaningful to the community to pass up. However, I have very little doubt that companies such as Microsoft and Nintendo would look to push Silk Song in the direction of an end of 22 release to capitalize on holiday sales. At the end of the day, it is just a number, and I obviously think the sooner we have Silk Song in our hands, the better. So I'm not exactly opposed to a holiday 2022 release, but I do believe releasing on February 24th of next year will really just mean that much more to the community surrounding this game. So the trailer opens up with the caption, Fight for the Fate of a Haunted Land, and haunted is definitely a pretty accurate way to describe these enemies that we're looking at here. They don't look particularly aggressive, behaving kind of aimlessly, perhaps representative of the average Silk Song fan aimlessly searching for bits of hope to stave off their next emotional decline. In the very next shot, we see Hornet demonstrating some of the platforming hazards we'll be dealing with. Not only do these grappling points explode, but it looks like they don't even respawn, likely until a good couple seconds have passed, further lending itself to the idea of speed and momentum really being of the essence here in Farloom. This is further emphasized in a later shot where we see Hornet attempting an escape from a rising lava pit while the Primal Aspid V2.0s try to impede you from climbing. And I know what's gonna happen, I can't wait to accidentally hit down and B or some shit and I end up drilling myself straight into the lava and sending myself to an early grave. We all know we're gonna do it and it's gonna be hilarious. A lot of people have been saying the background of this area sort of reminds them of a Holy Grounds area that at some point used to be thriving, but now seems pretty derelict. And of course, we have the Bell Beast, which by now I think many have drawn the conclusion that this will be our new method of fast traveling in Farloom. I'm guessing the bell at the very top of the room is an object Hornet can interact with by maybe zipping up to it, and that's how you call the Bell Beast to your location. Normally, when summoning a stag in Hollow Knight, there would be a little bell stand right here that you could just whack, but it seems Silk Song is placing the bell here at the very top to really hammer home the use of acrobatics and the agility the player will be pretty much reliant on through the course of the game. This next shot is one of the more hazard intense platforming sections where platforms are falling from the ceiling and you have to jump across them quickly before they get eaten by the saw blades below. This area has a very factory-esque feel to it, and there isn't any other shot in the trailer that seems to be in this area, leading me to believe this is one of the levels that Team Cherry have done a pretty good job keeping on the DL. We see that Hornet is wearing a crest here, and if we cite from the Silk Song issue of Edge Magazine, we see that this is called the Reaper Crest, which has six spaces for items, tools, and whatnot. If we slow down some of the footage, we actually get a glimpse of how some of your attacks will change depending on which crest you have on. The most glaring example being Hornet's claw attack, while this crest is equipped, which seems fitting since its design is literally just a claw. This creates an interesting way for players to creatively deal with some of Farloom's more threatening enemies, as the uppercut slash, I believe, will be really great against flying enemies and those of the sort. I'm not going to dissect these too much, but it does seem that some of the crests you can use will slightly modify some of Hornet's innate abilities and attacks. 
Here we get a quick view of Hornet using a Spirit Spring, or perhaps the Whirlwinds from Spyro the Dragon, whatever nickname you want to give these things. Maybe these will replace the necessity for elevators in Farloom for the most part, but I really like this way of travel for Hornet, for these foresty areas in the game that are a bit rougher and more undomesticated, because it gives her all the verticality she needs to properly explore these bigger areas, and it kind of looks as though she can just jump off at any time if there's an isolated cave or a nook nearby. I believe this will serve to give the forests and caves and other natural areas of Silksong their own texture and feel, contrasting very nicely with the more regal and elegant architecture found in areas like the Gilded City. We already saw these two architecture styles kind of juxtaposing quite nicely in the first Hollow Knight, and it's good to see that they're approaching the cities in Farloom with a very similar philosophy. By now I think most of you have observed that my personal analyses of these trailers are usually very gameplay heavy, and one particular aspect of Silk Song's gameplay that's always caught my eye is the crest system. I think it's pretty obvious that the heads-up display reflects whatever crest is currently being used, but this is actually not one we've seen before. This crest is yet to be named, but its unique ability allows the player to heal themselves with significantly less silk than normal, shown by the reduced area in the center, and shown further by the notch on the silk meter being pushed back a bit. This gives way to the idea of some crests having unique unique abilities or perks to using them that may not always be immediately apparent. This crest in particular extends into a harpsichord when the heal gauge is filled, but unfortunately there isn't any footage of the bind ability actually being used with this crest, so I can't really say whether or not this crest has any benefits or bonuses that trigger on heal. What I haven't seen too many people mentioning was its relation to the quest board we find somewhere in the Gilded City. The Wayfarer quest titled Haunted Gallery has an icon of a harpsichord next to it, possibly indicating that completing this quest on the board could lead to the acquisition of this crest. We've seen in plenty of games before how certain items that may only be acquired through challenging boss fights or specific quests tend to give the player these really powerful bonuses or abilities that you wouldn't normally find on similar but lower tier items. The boss weapons in Elden Ring and many other Souls and Souls-like iterations are pretty good examples of this. A good deal of the game's intensive platforming seems to take place inside this large clock tower structure, and we already know from the last Silk Song teaser years ago that a lot of workers in the Deep Docks keep track of their agenda and what needs to be moved where by a bell toll, and key fans have observed this as reason to believe the clock tower is very close to the Deep Docks area, perhaps even immediately after it in terms of linear progression. One of Team Cherry's earlier blog posts did say something about scaling a warlord's tower being one of the key plot points in Silk Song, and the tower surrounded by intense work labor in an otherwise inhabitable area such as the docks seems to fit that description pretty well. Maybe we'll get some more lore on that as theories develop and the release date draws close. Closer. The elevator shot might just only be an elevator shot, but it's still kind of interesting to me because this looks to be a very decrepit room of what's possibly the Gilded City area. This is also the only notable thing in this room, leading me to believe this could be the room either leading up to a boss fight or right after one. This room seems long abandoned, despite the elevator working fine, and some of the silk hanging from the ceilings have even hardened and have become rigid over time. We see the flying bus henchman finally getting its own utility slot much later after it was first revealed in the 2019 trailer, and this is where I want to take the time and point out that a lot of these tools bear really heavy resemblance to the tools of the enemies Hornet faces in Farloom. Not only does the flying henchman bug bear similarity to the thorns bug we saw in the clock tower area, but we can also see the same throwing pin tool being used by both Hornet and this flying enemy in a swamp near Greymoor. I guess maybe if you defeat a certain number of a certain type of enemy, you can unlock a blueprint perhaps, or maybe you just find them somewhere on the ground. I don't know. That part of the game's mechanics is still kinda up in the air, but it really does drive home just how resourceful Hornet is, and how skilled she can be at repurposing the tools of her opposition and making the environment work for her. This also means we can use the designs of other special enemies to make educated predictions about the functions of some tools we haven't yet seen be used. 
Moving on to one of the more combat-heavy shots of the trailer, Hornet is seen fighting enemies in what I believe to be the Citadel area, which is predicted to be one of Silk Song's late-game areas. There's a new tool she's using that we haven't seen before, and it looks very similar to the Lifeblood syringe, only a bright orange color instead of blue. I do have a slight idea of what this could be, and I think it's worth noticing that we see this tool in use again in an Xbox screenshot of the game, and the only two times we see this tool being used also coincides with this fancy cap on our silk meter, leading me to believe this tool could be used to temporarily increase the amount of silk you can carry, similar to how the lifeblood syringe can buff Hornet with an extra couple health points and what what whoa, whoa what the fu- holy shit, is that guy throwing his own friend at me? Well, we must really be trespassing wherever we are because it's pretty obvious these guys just do not want us here. This clip made me go absolutely nuts. I was wondering what that drill-looking tool we saw earlier on was going to be for, but I wouldn't have guessed in a million years that it could actually turn Hornet into a drill. I'm guessing this to function similarly to Desolate Dive, albeit a bit more precise and possibly dealing multiple hits in rapid succession. And the dismount actually gives Hornet a bit of verticality as well, seeing as that she leaps into the air after the attack is finished. I'm seeing this happen with a few different abilities, which makes me think the speedrun tech for this game is gonna be it, it's just gonna be fucking nuts it's it's gonna be on a whole other level we also have more shielded enemies, particularly this one. It wields a great shield and a mace type weapon, and it looks like it has a lot of HP and can be pretty difficult to bounce around because of that great shield, so I imagine this to be one of the many encounters that will have the player leveraging Hornet's agility against more stalwart foes like this one. But the enemies won't always be strength first and agility second. In fact, a lot of what Hornet has stacked up against her seem to be honestly nimbler than she is. There are plenty of foes, for instance, that can hover hover around and shoot projectiles at Hornet, and we've already seen how the workers in the deep docks have hard hats that prevent attacks from above. We get a look at some of Hornet's more powerful silk-related abilities, such as a forward lunge that pierces through enemies and travels you forward a bit as well, meaning some of its utility might also be found in the game's platforming. There's this somersault attack that results in the needle being swung downward, which seems to work great on larger enemies on the ground, but the downward slam appears to reward Hornet with just a bit more silk than what's necessary to use the move. How you acquire these powers is up in the air right now, but but one theory that I've been mulling around in my head is this cutscene where she stabs a lone body and becomes enveloped in silk. We saw a really similar cutscene in a much earlier Silk Song trailer where Hornet was absorbing lots of silk, so this could be her absorbing a new silk power that she can then use combatively. It's also worth mentioning you can see the silk meter in the process of refilling itself upon doing this. Judging by the scissors hanging from the ceiling being the same scissors we see some of the enemies use in the dilapidated dated tower. These two rooms I would wager are pretty close together and part of the same area. Right here is something I really want to focus on. It's not a huge detail and I doubt many people will care about it, but what's that? Are those shards floating in the water? As in they can still be collected? If so, that's a pretty massive improvement from the first Hollow Knight. Swimming was an innate ability the knight had, and I imagine the same will be the case for Hornet, although not in every single puddle she can find. I imagine some of the more hazardous areas, like what's speculated to be the bottom layer of the Forest of Bones, will have plenty of magma pits for the player to avoid. So I can't really think of any other reason for this change except the fact that they just decided it would be more convenient to not flush half the resources you worked for down the shitter just because an enemy was floating over a little puddle or something when it died. And apparently this one clip made a lot of people go nuts because a lot of people immediately were able to tell that the speed of the bind animation had been slowed down, not by a large amount, but definitely enough to make a gameplay difference. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean they decided the previous iteration was too quick. In fact, one popular theory that a lot seem to have is that this could point to evidence of there being a crest or a tool of some kind in Silk Song that will allow you to quicken the bind animation a la quick focus. And the animation we're seeing here in this trailer might just be the default speed of the bind without any crests or tools to boost the speed. 
All right, moving on to some of the game's bosses. The Last Judge is a boss encounter that I think some of us should be familiar with. This guy was given some spotlight in the interview with Edge magazine, and now we finally get to see what it would be like fighting against him. He can dash across the ground and summon fire pillars, a la Troop Master Grimm, but the dash can easily be avoided with a pogo attack, it seems. One screenshot of this boss displays an attack where he throws his sensor wrecking ball, uh, thing, and it lights on fire and explodes, igniting the area around it, which is a little different from the attack we see in the trailer without the explosion, leading me to believe this attack from the screenshot might be from the boss's second phase. Cut him down to low enough HP, he decides he's done with your shit and lights up his sensor, and wham, fire attacks. I don't think it's a coincidence that we're given a shot of Hornet demoing this red shell tool, and then immediately afterwards giving us footage of this boss fight here. And this is likely where we get this tool, seeing how the designs are incredibly similar, which again lends itself to the idea that some of Hornet's more powerful tools and abilities could be specifically acquired from bosses, while the other more reusable tools like simple throwing pins and explosives can be crafted very early, likely by either grabbing them from enemies or just digging them up somewhere. And speaking of boss fights, holy hot damn have they stepped up their game. This next shot gives us what's likely the main boss of the tomb area, where it looks down at us from the ceiling and starts swiping at us with its claws, and this this thing just looks absolutely terrifying. Other memorable bosses from the trailer include a bony charging bug that we likely get this armor tool from, a flying menace that Garment and Zaza can be seen parrying right before the cutaway, and a chef that can swing it better than Tiger fucking Woods. There's probably a lot more here that we are bound to miss simply because these trailer analyses can only be based off of information we've already known or seen in other pieces of footage, magazines, or interviews, so chances are there's plenty of significant little moments that shine some insight on how the gameplay works, how the tools function, what benefits the crests can give us, and so forth. If you want to follow this channel for future updates, please don't subscribe because I think it's obvious that shit just doesn't work anymore. Uh, I guess just leave a comment about anything I missed. Maybe, I don't know, mute the video video and leave it playing in the background or something for the watch time. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what works and what doesn't anymore, so I guess just enjoy this really cool shot of Green Path while I take this guitar here for a stroll.